Good afternoon, everyone. We are delegates of Lambton School and are here today to present the genomics project, which we have been a part for the past six months. Acknowledge the outstanding possibilities it can bring to our world of biological research. Now, this project was given to us by scientists working at the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute and by Informatics in association with IRIS, where 60 schools across the UK took part in. The project involved curating genes, which would allow researchers to get a bet better understanding of the human whipworm. By decoding the genome of the whole whipworm, we're hoping to combat one of the world's most neglected tropical diseases. It's important to mention Peter Netson from Aarhus University, who infected himself, so whenever researchers needed access to really high quality DNA material, they had access to this because of him. Thank you. The human whipworm is a parasitic roundworm. The human whipworm is a global parasitic, parasitic roundworm which affects approximately 500 million people worldwide. Mainly affects young children in sub-Saharan Africa and Asia. It is caused by the ingestion of the eggs which is passed through soil, dirt or contamination. Due to this, school children can miss out on numerous school days and this effectively keeps them missing out on education which keeps the poor trapped, which keeps the poor trapped in the poverty cycle which they can't really help to combat the disease. During the course of this project, we have acquired several skills, including teamwork, communication, IT skills, perseverance, and organization. This has allowed us to gain insight as to how scientists work in the real world to combat major disease outbreaks. Manual curation has enabled us to embed our prior biological knowledge in, into real-life problem solving in order to dominate this underfunded outbreak. Each participant was given 10 tokens to curate at each time. Once one finished their token, this was checked by an automated computers, um, computer system, and if everything seemed fine, more tokens were given after feedback and response. Computer curation is difficult due to the complicated gene sequence, so manual hum human curation ensured more accuracy and precision, and allowed us to evaluate the genes singularly and correct the problems the computer had created for us during the process of curation. The understanding required for curation was arduous to achieve from an automated response and needed human analytical skills. So manual curation was vital for a good genome decode. <coughs> to generate the sequence data, whipworms are broken up in the labs by opening cells, allowing DNA extraction to occur. To sequence the DNA, the DNA is broken up into shorter sections of sequences, and this goes into a sequencing machine. For the whipworm genome, scientists managed to get 29 million reads from the machine. Scientists are working to put back together the three chromosomes of Trichurus trichura. However, the genome needs to be annotated so we know where the genes are in the genome and how they are constructed. If we know the genes, then we know the proteins of the organism, which will aid in the development of vaccines, enabling us to counter these infectious diseases with medicinal support and preventative measures. For any disease, the cause of the problem is ne necessary to identify before being able to search for a treatment or cure. And this is what the curation has helped us achieve. Apollo is a software which enables students across the UK to work together on the DNA to annotate the human whipworm. We annotated these genes so that we are able to extract the genome for the whipworm. Now we're going to take a look into the practicalities to how Apollo works. So at the beginning, we were each allocated up to 10 tokens and we would systematically work through them. Each token is a section on the genome and we would look at the genes in this area. So this is a representation of a gene so how do we know if the gene model is correct? Well, the histogram represents the evidence for our exons, and the light blue bar rep represents the evidence for our introns. If a gene model has sufficient evidence, indicated by a number greater than 20, greater than 20 then we'll promote this into the scratch area, where we'll be selectively fixing the start codon, methionine, and the stop codon for each individual strand. Once submitted our token onto Apollo, the gene models would end up in a database where they're periodically checked by a computer system, providing, on a, providing us with feedback on things like insufficient short read support, uh, no start codon, and no stop codon, in which we would have to fix specific to the strand number or provide it alongside the feedback. Once corrected, this would be resubmitted and we had a, would have completed a token. Having gotten in touch with the scientists who are working to use the 10,000 or so transcripts that we and other students across the UK have annotated so far, we have been told that our work this past year will eventually be used, um, once having been completed and cleaned, will eventually be used to make comparisons to any species related to, 
to Trichurus in order to identify any possible interesting gene families that could help them to identify what it is about um, the genetic make makeup of Trichurus trichuria that allows these parasites to infect humans and stay within us for as long and as viciously as they do. On top of this, they are, working, they are also working to ultimately make all of this data freely available to scientists all around the world who will then be able to use this data when designing and carrying out their own research to combat the whipworm epidemic. <clears throat> Recently, we exhibited our research in front of an assembled audience of scientists at the IRS anniversary evening at the Crick Institute. The Crick is an independent organization, their founding partners being the Medical Research Council, or MRC, Cancer Research UK, Wellcome, UCL, Imperial College London, and King, King's College London. It was founded in 2015. The CRIC brings together 1,500 scientists and staff working collaboratively across disciplines, making it the biggest biomedical research facility across Europe. Back in January, Lambton Academy had passed over 2,100 annotations. In addition to this, three of the top 10 annotators were from Lambton. We are proud to be a part of a community with enthusiastic students and engaged in creating a vaccine which can treat millions of people infected with whipworms worldwide. And this affects whole societies due to a general level of ill health. The genome is the starting point for, any, for understanding any organism. It is the instruction manual. Curating the whipworm genome could reveal vulnerabilities in the parasite that might be exploitable as drug or vaccine targets. In the long term, this project could help towards reducing the number of children infected with whipworms in less developed part of the world and help them to get back to school. Whipworm infections are generally treated for one to three days with medication prescribed by your local health care provider. Currently, four neglected tropical diseases are sometimes treated through mass drug administrations. Since the drugs used are safe and inexpensive or donated, entire risk groups are offered preventive treatment. Mass drug administrations are conducted periodically, commonly with drug distributors who go door to door. Studying the Whitburn genome has also interested us into pursuing a career path into genomics, for instance, antibiotic resistance, cancer biology, immune diseases, and evolution. The genomics project has really benefited my academic learning at school because it links to one of the chapters we are learning about, in, which is genes, in which we learn about how they replicate their origins along with other key information. This project has enabled us to use our understanding of genes and apply it to real life problems, allowing us to have, direct, have a direct impact on people's lives. We have been a part of a team curating 15,000 genes and our work in studying the whipworm can help scientists find new ways of treating and preventing trichariasis. We have enjoyed this evening and hope you have as well and encourage you to approach us for any other queries on this project or the disease as a whole. Thank you for your support and it's been a pleasure being up here on stage and presenting to you.